Hey everyone, welcome back to Code of the Row. In this video, we're going to be going over our ACF Action Bar and Spellbook Part 3, but it's going to be pretty short because I just want to show you guys the power of Ascent Combat Framework because as I kind of state in a lot of my videos, the actions component is really what makes this framework to be one of the simplest and easiest frameworks to use that's replicated and usable in any way possible. So I'm going to create a simple button that when you click on it, it just uses your spell just using the sample and it's super easy. It's I've been overcomplicating this in my head, but it's actually way, way, way easier than you might actually think it is. So for example, in my ultimate map, I'm going to go over and search for my spells. So I'm just going to look for um, that quake fire spell called ACF fire quake action BP. And it also comes with an actor called ACF fire quake actor BP. And this is, let's go over what it's doing. So pretty much it does come with a ton of blueprint. And it's pretty much just casting to our ACF character, getting our location, getting our target control rotation to tell it which way to spawn and go, which direction, so that when we point in a certain direction, this ACF Firequake action will spawn our ACF Firequake actor that we set here. So for example, the template has this fire stuff and all the elements or materials that make up this fireball thing that you can't really see right here because it only shows up when it's being used. And it has a movement component of showing how fast it'll travel and so on and a collisions manager to do damage and all that, right? So when we have this fire actor, when we use this action, it spawn, when we use this action, it'll spawn this actor. And because this is already set up for us, all we need to do in order to actually make a really compatible or UI friendly hotbar is that we can simply just make a bunch of little buttons with icons on it so that when we so we can kind of mix and match whichever order they go, kind of like your normal spell books in MMOs. And let's go over something really, really quick and really, really easily. So I'm going to go over to my HUD class, my ACF Ultimate HUD. You can also do this in the full sample. No worries. And make sure you have an icon or actually, yeah. So double click on your HUD class to open this up just like that. And I'm just going to look for the HUD class that ACF is using. So it's WBP underscore Ultimate HUD. And I'll just double click to open that up. Now you can ignore the bottom stuff on my screen. You won't have this cast bar. You may not even have this action bar, but this tutorial isn't really. So yeah, we're not talking about the cast bar or the action bar right now. We're just, we just want a button so that when you click on it, it'll actually use it from your character. So what I'm going to do is in my library, I'm going to add a button right on the canvas panel. And I'm just going to click on this to center it up. So for the anchor, I'm just going to put it right in the center and set that position X and Y to zero. And I want you to follow along step by step just because it's easier to understand why ACF is so is such a powerful tool. So for the alignment, I'm going to do 0.5 and 0.5 just to uh, neatly put this in the center. For the size X, I'll do 50. Size Y, I'll also do 50 just so it's going to be a square on our screen. And I'll just tint this to something like red, make it a red square because this is going to be our fire spell. I'm going to make sure its variable is tracked and change this name to fire spell. Now I'll hit compile and save. And I just want to go into the graph and don't be intimidated. This is all, this is just a lot of stuff I've included. And basically in our event graph, we're going to do something super simple. So when we click on this button, it's going to summon our fireball. So in our variables tab on the left, when I, while I have my fire spell clicked, I'm going to scroll down in the details panel. I don't know why details is on the left specifically for widget stuff, but whatever. Under events, you'll see an on clicked event. And I will click that to add this functionality into our event graph. From our on clicked, we're just simply going to trigger an action. And you're probably not going to see it because this is an, an ACF specific function. So it's not going to show up in these context sensitive stuff. So what I'm going to do is just uncheck this context sensitive, click trigger action. And now a couple things that I need to do. So from the target, I'm just going to get the actions component because our trigger action will always use an actions component as stated in our characters. And now the target, I'm just going to get a local ACF player character just because our character is the one that this is going to be called from. And from here, we can just simply call in action state. So I'm just going to call that fireball spell that we created just like that, hit compile and save. And now when I go over to my ultimate map, hit play, you'll see this red dot, this red button that we created. And depending on where we're facing, it's actually going to shoot there because that's how this ACF quake 
action BP, the action itself is set up to get our characters, actor, rotation, target, and so on. So that's why when I click play and hit this red button, it will shoot when I click on it into the direction that I'm looking at. So if I were to look on the ground, it's just going to shoot it on the ground. And it is as simple as that. So it, ideally what you could do is instead of just making a complex hot bar and spell book that kind of like what I was getting into is that you could simply just have a bunch of little widget blueprints that will all act as its own spell so that when you click on it or you can get the order of the key bind that it's in in order to use that skill. So for example, if you have fireball on your five key, your five key will use that fireball. So now I just designed a simple button right here. So for normal and hovered, it's just calling this image of the fireball and not doing anything. So I'm going to leave it as fully white in this case. And same with the hovered because I don't really want my hover effect to do anything. Um, just because it's going to look like it's being used when I hover it and I don't want that. But when I click it, I just have the same image, but I made it a little darker over here. So now when I hit compile and save, I just positioned it. I anchored it down here. And now when I go to my map, it looks like that I have a spell icon. I just need to pretty up the UI. And of course, I'll do that later. But you'll see hovering does nothing. And you could make it a little darker. Maybe it does look a little weird because now it just looks like a PNG on the screen. But when I click it and hold my click on it, you'll see that it's about to be used. And if I click off, it won't get used. But if I click on it and let go while it's on it, it will just use my spell. So now I'll just go back and make it a little darker on the hovered one. So for example, for hovered, for the tint, I'm just going to do it a little tiny bit darker over here. And then I think when it's clicked, I will make it quite a bit darker. So when I hit compile and save and go back, I can hover over my abilities to kind of look like it's going to be used and let the player know that this is being hovered over. And when I click, it gets a little bit darker. And now when I click on it, it can be used and you can make all these into its own little widget blueprint as little buttons that you can just assemble in and out. And then even for your spell book or your UI bar, you can just drag, you can make it so that you can drag these other places and automatically switch slots and so on because of this ACF spell slot or slots manager component that's already included. You can give them a child of this and just add whatever spells they're allowed to use. And then in your ultimate character blueprint, you can assign when or what level it is that requires, for example, this ability or when they buy it, then they can use it and so on. So basically, if they were to buy an ability from a vendor, kind of like MMORPGs, then they would be able to basically buy that widget blueprint button that will appear in their spell book, which allows them to use the spell. So that's a pretty brief overview. It's definitely probably going to open some eyes on how to do certain things, but we will be continuing this series. So no worries. Thanks for watching Code of Grow. Like, subscribe, comment below what you want to see next, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.